I'm Jeff Cook and this is Backyard Basics. Well, we're a couple days in the spring and since I'm standing here in a strawberry field, you probably figure we're going to talk about gardening or some kind of some kind of spring vegetables that you might be thinking about planting or getting your garden ready. But with this crazy weather we've had this March, I don't think I really want a chance, you know, people putting seed or vegetable transplants in the ground. You know, hopefully you've gotten your garden ready from things we talked about in the past shows or, or articles I've written in local papers. Uh, but this, this month we're going to talk about something that I'm not really an expert on, but I've learned a lot in the last couple of days and with the help of our, you know, DNR conservation ranger or game warden, Josh Wayne, you know, I learned a little bit more um, earlier in the week. Uh, we were provided a uh, little bit of funds from Waste Industries and Roy Walton down the south end of Taylor County to purchase some uh, some materials to put together some wood duck boxes. So we got some youth together um, and put wood duck boxes together for those youth to take back to their farm ponds or their ponds at, 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 their, home, at their homes on their property or maybe even donate to a neighbor. Um, so since we did that, it gave me an idea to maybe talk about you know some habitat improvement for a, a species of animal that I don't really know much about or care that much about, which is bad to say. Um, I did learn, I have learned that you know being in Taylor County, the one way to be um, you're kind of outed in the county, you know, is to let them know that you do not or have never hunted ducks. I think it's like a rite of passage in Taylor County to be a duck hunter and, it, and, and everybody in this county. I think if you asked them, if you gave them a choice, would you rather hunt deer or ducks? I think 99% of them are going to say they'd rather hunt ducks. Um, they're very passionate about it. So I thought it'd be pretty interesting to, to talk about, you know, building wood duck boxes to improve the habitat for wood ducks in these ponds and in, in waterways in the area. And it's a, it's a cheap thing, it's a cheap uh, tool that you can put out to, in, you know, increase the number of wood ducks you might have to, um, you know, help out the habitat, to help out the species. And it's something that, you know, a family, a, a dad and son, or a granddad and a, a grandson can easily put together on a weekend and put together a few of them. And I mean, I, I even looked into it thinking, hey, for what they cost to put together and what I've seen them for sale for as a kit or as a completed box. It might be even be a little fun, fundraising activity for the 4-H group or just any, any local youth group. I'm sure plenty of people in this area would purchase wood duck boxes. So we're going to move on out of the strawberry patch here in, in Reynolds and, uh, and uh, go talk about wood duck boxes, talk, talk about wood ducks and their habitat, and even maybe put, put together a wood duck box. Like I said earlier, I'm not an expert on wood ducks, wood duck habitat, but I did learn a lot by, you know, listening to what Josh had to say the other day, to, you know, to when he was talking to the kids, telling them about wood ducks and the, you know, the habitat. And I did do a little bit of research so I wouldn't sound totally ignorant on the subject. The first thing that I learned, and I learned it pretty quickly, is that wood ducks, you know, they're about half the size of a mallard, so they're a fairly small duck. Uh, they're native to our, our area here, and they, they really, they're called wood ducks for a reason. They really love wooded areas. They love flooded swamps. They, you know, beaver ponds make up really great habitat for wood ducks. So they like shallow waters, um, not open, not a lot of open water. Shallow waters, you know, surrounded by trees, surrounded by woods. And naturally, they would nest in old, sh old snags, or a, a snag is just an, uh, an old dead tree that might have a, a cavity in it, they would nest in these cavities and that's where the, the females would lay their eggs, raise their, raise their young, you know, and when the young are ready, they fall out of the, tr fall out of the tree directly into the pond, they're ready to go. Um, you know, since a lot of these, these ponds like that don't exist, you don't have, you don't have a lot of them around, um, you know, some habitat might be taken up by getting, you know, think land's getting cleared and you got, you know, other, other things going on, you know, the habitat might not be, you know, quite suitable for them. So what we're going to talk about here is just kind of modifying your habitat. Um, another thing, you know, just because they're a duck doesn't mean they're going to be attracted to every body of water. You know, a lot of our farm ponds, you know, the things we do to keep a farm pond nice and cl clean and free of weeds um, and make it, you know, use usable for us may not make it as usable for a wood duck. Steep banks on a pond are really good for keeping weeds down because the weeds usually grow off the bottom of the pond. Steep, steep uh, banks on a pond for wood ducks wouldn't be good because these ducks are what they call dabbling ducks. And I always thought it was just, I thought I always thought the term dabbling just duck just meant they just wandered around, you know, aimlessly. But I learned a dabbling duck is a duck that actually feeds on vegetation that's emergent from the water. It's, it's either floating on the water surface or it's above the water. Um, so just having a deep pond that has maybe some vegetation on the bottom is not good for these ducks because they're not diving ducks. They're not going. They're not they're like a coot or something like that. I think they're not going to be a duck that dives to the bottom and can pull vegetation off the bottom. They need things on top or things that are sticking up out of the water. 
Another benefit to the, the emergent weeds and the emergent uh, vegetation coming out of the pond, like reeds, sedges, maybe even these lilies back here, is they actually serve as a way, uh, uh, as a place for the, the, the immature, the small ducklings to hide. They serve as some cover. I wouldn't have known this until I read a little bit, but you know, snapping turtles and largemouth bass are one of the number one predators of, of wood ducks. And I would assume that uh, you know, if you have a wide open pond that wood ducks were in, I would assume that hawks and things like that would also the raptors would also be, you know, something that might um, you know might prey on the wood ducks. Uh, we're right here in the first of Mar or middle middle of March, almost the first of April. Wood ducks tend to need things that are high in fat going into winter, so like acorns and things like that. Um, as we move into spring, this time of year, they need, more, they need things more like, that are high in protein, like insects and things like that. So that's something else to consider in an area where you, know, where you might be trying to think about improving the habitat for wood ducks. The nesting season's kind of already started, so our nests might be going in a little late, but they will nest from February until June. Um, if a nest is destroyed, they'll you know they'll re-nest somewhere else so you know these nest boxes that we're putting out these wood duck boxes that we're putting out now you know they may be maybe that they, they may not be inhabited this year they may not be used this year by a female but you know if a, if a nest is destroyed nearby they might take up in one of these this year if not then it'll be in place for ne the next mating season but they normally will use a nest or use a box uh, the female will find it they'll nest um, and they'll have they'll lay an egg I think they said every day up until they, up, up until they get about 12 to 15 eggs, um, and that'll be the like the clutch. Um, and you know, as those as those they uh, hatch out um, within a day or two of hatching, the mother already begins to get out of the box, go out in the water, and begin to call the the, the young out into the you know out into the open water to begin exploring their native habitat, their natural surroundings. All right, so. Before I even get started on this wood duck box, I want to just you know mention that all the information that I talk about here can be found on, on Georgia Department of Natural Resources or DNR's website. If you look up you know wood duck boxes, they have fact sheets for every animal that lives in Georgia. You know rare animals, uh, native animals that aren't rare, and if there is some kind of habitat you know improvement you can do, whether it's wood ducks, whether it's bluebirds, you know something like that. Even even the American kestrel, the eastern kestrel, I can't remember it's one of the two, uh, this native here. You know they have information on how you can improve the habitat for them you know some of y'all might have seen you I'm sure everybody's seen a bluebird box well it has plans to how to build you know how and you know the spec specs for building a bluebird box you can also build boxes to for nesting for the, the kestrel which is a small hawk a lot of times you see them on power lines you know especially in this area um, people call them people call them sparrow hawks things like that um, but this, all this information is on there, and on the on the second page of the wood duck wood duck fact sheet is the are the plans you know for how to build the wood duck box. So we'll talk a little bit about it. We'll even build one. Um, for the first thing, the the best thing, the most important thing you need to build a wood duck box, or the, or the best thing I think you need, is a good game warden that can go ahead and pre-cut everything for you. And he even went as far as to pre-drill the holes for us. But we're going to talk a little bit about all the pieces and parts and kind of some specifications and things you need to consider before you, you know, when you're putting it together. Um, the recommendations for building the wood duck box are, are to use rough cut uh, cedar. Uh, rough cut probably in cedar, cedar just for the, you know, for the life of the wood because it's very pest tolerant, you know, pest proof, um, insect proof. So the, the, wood, the, the wood in it should last a lot longer. Um, also, you can use yellow pine, and there's one other wood that I can't quite remember, but uh, either way, you know, just using a rough cut lumber is going to be the best. This is not rough cut. Another thing with the rough cut, which we'll talk about in a minute too, is it's got a little grip to it. So the ducks, especially the baby ducks, can grip a hold when they're on the inside trying to get out. Because you'll see when, you, when, you, when we get this thing put together or start working on it, it's a pretty deep box. Uh, the other thing to consider is you want a box that's going to be between 20 and 27 inches tall and 10 to 12 inches wide, um, fairly square. So that's, that's two of the biggest thing to, things to consider. This actually, if Josh told me correctly, one, one by 12 by 12 will produce one wood duck box. So you need one one by 12 by 12 and about 30 screws and a saw, and you can build you a wood duck box. So we'll talk about it real quick and kind of some things that, to do um, as we put these things together. All right, 
I guess the most important part of the wood duck box is a way for the wood ducks to get in. Um, you can tell this is kind of an oval hole, um, perfect shape of a duck when it's, you know, when it's when it's like this. They're not they're not perfectly round. And they're definitely not square. Um, three four inches wide by three inches tall, oval shaped. You can cut it out easily. Cut it out with a um, jigsaw. And then you would use, a, use some, side of, some sort of sander or sandpaper, smooth the edges so they don't catch anything when it is they're entering and exiting. Uh, probably should do that on both the inside and the outside. This is the outside, it can be nice and smooth. On the inside, what I've done is crude, but I just took an old, my, 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 my handy dandy hunting um, saw that I use for cutting limbs and uh, took the edge of it and roughed this up. The, rec the, the specifications or the plan actually call for using uh, one by one mesh, um, like fencing, chicken wire type stuff that's pretty stiff, tacked to the inside right here. And what that's for is you can imagine if you've got a four inch layer of wood chips down here, wood ducks nesting here, 12 eggs, they hatch out, you got a little tiny baby, uh, baby duckling. How in the heck is that little baby duckling gonna get from here to here? Well, they have claws on there little points on their uh, web feet, they can actually put, dig those into this wood and climb up so they can get out. It simulates bark. Anything that makes that rough, the rough setup makes it simulate, similar to bark so they can get a little grip on it. And you can imagine if they're trying to get a grip on that, they're never gonna get a grip on that. And then all you've done is you built a wood duck duckling trap. So the front exit hole and make sure you've got it roughed up there. Um, that's, that's number one thing. Second thing we'll talk about, this, this is going to be what I would just call the roof. This is going to be the top, and we'll put it all together in a second. The roof's going to be a little bit, a little bit longer than the depth of this box. The box is only going to be 10, I mean 12 inches deep. The roof's going to be a little bit bigger. Why is that? That's to keep rain out. Um, when, as, you, you know, as it rains, it keeps as much rain out as you can um, to help you know, keep the bedding in there dry, help keep the ducklings dry. So we'll go ahead and I will get my drill and get a few screws. We'll put this thing together and talk about a few more, few more things, you know, with the, with the box after it's all put together and kind of why we did some things. And then we'll, hit, we'll touch on how to mount them. So yeah, the game warden, I think their official title is conservation ranger because they're really there to conserve Georgia wildlife. Uh -huh. But we, me and Josh do, sometimes do hunter safety together and one of the kids called him a park ranger and <laughs> Josh, Josh, Josh was close to uh he was very close to um failing the kid right there and not letting <laughs> not letting him take the test so you can call them game wardens they don't even like to be called conservation rangers but don't call them a park ranger And this is a lot easier to do when you're doing it on a, a workbench or a flat table than on the back of a truck. Yeah. And since Josh took the time to pre-drill these holes, I'm gonna make sure I get it all lined up correctly so he didn't give me a hard time. Oh yeah. Like we gave the kids a hard time. Mm -hmm. It was, uh oh, it was pretty, What else do we need to know about wildlife? So as you can see right now, this is a little bigger than a bluebird box. Oh, a lot bigger. Bluebird boxes are like, like, like pretty small, right? They're pretty small. All right, so. We've got the, the main the main part of the the duck out the, the wood duck box together. We're gonna put the back on. All the backs come with a pre a pre-drawn line so you know where to line your thing up. Not really, but we'll continue with the jokes. And hopefully I've got this lined up fairly right. Fairly fairly well. Can anybody out there tell me why you would have the back longer on top and bottom than the, the box? 
Jacob, you got a reason, got a good guess why? The, the back is a lot longer on either side, either end, top and bottom. She was tapping to the oh, he's got it. You want the back to be bigger so that you can actually mount it. You probably could mount it if you didn't do it like this, but it would make it a lot more difficult. And since you're probably going to be mounting this thing in a boat, floating out in a pond, I think you want to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. So yeah, you would use lag screws to attach it to a pole. Um, and that just allows you to do it right there. And one thing I'm do, I've already done that I probably should have done already is, since it's gonna be kind of difficult to put that bottom piece in there, I probably should have left this undone. So I'm gonna redo that real quick. Some of y'all that older might have, some of the older folks that are watching this might have seen a guy named Bob Vila that used to build houses. I think this old house on like Channel 8 or something. He would not be proud of me right now. I'm pretty sure he would not. But I've always told people, I'm not much of a, I'm not much on the finer details of building things. When I was in college, I framed houses. And my boss always told me, it didn't have to be perfect. We, were building a, we weren't building a piano, we were just building the box to put the piano in. <laughs> Did you get that, Jacob? Piano, fine instrument, you know. It's gotta be precision. House, not so much. Yeah. That is an old person joke. So yeah, put the bottom in before you put the back on. Unless you're really good at cutting all your lumber square. Another thing I didn't mention is you make, make sure you use like a, I think they're zinc coated, um, you know, screws that are going to actually withstand um, weather and stuff. You know, you don't want something that's going to rust in a few years and have your box fall apart. I think zinc coat is right. I could be wrong. But something that's treated, something, I mean something that's gonna, it's made for outside. And that wasn't too terribly bad. All right, so get the back started. Got our bottom on there. While I'm thinking about it, this is the bottom. Yeah, it's gonna be outside, it's gonna be on a pond. The, animal, the, ducks and, the ducks are gonna be wet, there's gonna be rain that still gets in even though the roof's a little bit big. On the bottom, you wanna, you wanna drill three, I mean three, five uh, quarter inch, three eighths inch holes. One in each, either corner, maybe one in the middle to allow for some drainage, let the water, water drain through. There's no reason to, to drill any holes on the side for ventilation. Uh, they don't need that. They've got enough room um, up here to keep them, I'm, I don't think they're gonna get very hot in there. Um, there's no issues with that. And they're only gonna use it during nesting season, so they usually, by June, they're out of this, this box. They're not gonna be back in. They're not gonna be in and out of it all year. Once they're done with nesting, I'm assuming a wood duck's gonna be out foraging, flying around, avoiding predators. I guess that's what wood ducks do. Dabbling. They're gonna be dabbling. Hey, everything worked out. We're back on Josh's line, so. Maybe he'd, be, maybe he'd give me a good grade. Dun, 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 dun. All right, first thing first to consider, um, you can mount this thing on a metal or a wooden pole. Josh actually recommended putting it on some, some sort of PVC um, because the, a lot of the predators that might be able to get up here and get into uh, the box, you know, the PVC is gonna be pretty slick. Um, but DNR's recommendation basically says to make sure you got some sort of predator guard. Predator guard is a kind of cone shaped. So even if a snake or something was to slither up the pole, whatever pole you put, it's not, the, the snake's not, not gonna be strong enough to get 
hang onto that pole and get out and around it and get over it to get up here into the box. So you've got your back, you know, you, you've got your back, go out and go out in your pond and make sure you, like we talked about earlier, you may, you know, you want to have it in the right kind of habitat. So this is your finished box. You want to have it in, in the right kind of habitat, um, you know, somewhere where there is vegetation for the, the wood ducks to feed on, and vegetation for the wood ducks to, um, the, the baby ducklings to hide in. Um, I didn't mention, but some of the bushes that, that we have native here, some of the alders, some of the button bush things, uh, button bush, bushes that are around ponds and things are good, uh, good duck, you know, good duck feed. They like to feed on the seeds. Um, so you got this is your bag, you know, that you attach to your pole. Go out there and put your pole into the ground. Like a 10 to 11 foot pole should be good. You want to have the bottom of the box at about three feet above your high water mark in your pond. You know, kind of you know where your high water mark is. You know, if you're putting one of these things out in midsummer, you know, if you put it three feet above that mark, you know, by the time winter rolls around, we get some rains, you know, you might have water within six inches of it. Um, that just, that really just makes it easier for predators to get to. So put it three feet above your high water mark, put your predator guard on it. And like I said, PVC, take it out there. You can take post, post drivers things like that and beat those into the, into the bottom of most of these ponds um, to get them in there get them stable and then anchored and then take this take the box out there attach it to it like I said makes sure before you before you take it out there it's nice you don't always have to do it because I think the ducks would do it too but it's nice if you put about four inches of wood shavings down the bottom to provide them some nesting material already in there make that wood that wood duck box that much more attractive all right, a few more random things to consider when you're when you're working on your duck box. Uh, the DNR plan actually has a, a, slant, a sloped roof, which might be a little bit better to keep water from puddling and ponding right here. Um, if you're like me, you can't cut a straight straight line, so you know with a flat box, you're gonna have a pretty good gap right here. Uh, I don't know that they'd recommend it or even call for it, but if you have a flat roof, you might you know say caulk right here to keep water from running down the back. Um, also, there's one thing they don't recommend, you know, if you're using cedar, you probably don't need to, but if you're using white pine, something like that, it might benefit you to make the, the box last longer if you stain the box. They don't recommend painting the boxes. When our 4 H's were putting them together today, some of the girls wanted to paint, you know, we even recommended maybe putting welcome on the front, uh, put a little welcome mat, you know, ducks only to keep predators out. Uh, but we were informed you really don't want to paint the boxes, you know, no bright colors, no flashing signs, no glitter. Um, another thing to consider when you're mounting is, you know, using lag bolts in this back is probably better than nails or even small screws. Small screws can break, bust, rust, get stripped out. Lag bolt will be there, be a lot more sturdy, a lot more stout. Plus, you can remove the lag bolts down the road if you need to make repairs or if you need to replace your wood, wood duck box. Uh, if this thing falls, starts falling apart, you're ready to replace it, you got a good spot, your post is in good shape, you know, putting lag bolts in will help you remove this box, put a new box in place, or take it down, take it back to the house, fix it up a little bit, and, uh, and go from there. Um, the other thing to consider is that you should, you should clean these things out annually. Like I said, from probably February to June is when they're gonna be, the, the females are gonna be using these boxes. So, you know, at the end, at middle, mid, mid summer will be a good time to come back in, clean the shavings out, clean everything else, whatever else might be in there out. Um, I would just say, you know, when you, get, when you get in here to try and clean one of these out, which should be fairly easy by popping a few screws off, when you do to come in here to clean these things out, as always, if you're, if you're around the pond, around anything, be weary of wasps. Wasps can definitely, would definitely love to go into these um, boxes. If you, most of you guys have been fishing on a pond and you bumped into a tree out in the middle of a pond on a little stump. I mean, wasps love those, love those areas. So be careful of wasps, bees, things like that that might come take up into these nest, nest, box, nest boxes once the wood ducks vacate them, you know, midsummer. All right, we, we got our duck box up. I don't have a pole right now or a boat or a lag bolt. So I'm not gonna put this thing out in the pond right now. Um, I'm gonna load it up in the truck. It's Friday afternoon. I got one more stop to make.
Well, first off, hopefully this spring actually finally comes and we warm up so we can start getting to things that I know something about, like gardening, uh, vegetables, fruit crops. Um, but until then, hopefully this month you, you'll learn a little bit about wood ducks, their habitat, their biology, the needs of the, of the mating pairs, you know, and even how to build one of these wood duck boxes to improve the habitat and maybe actually increase the number of animals you have in your pond. Uh, maybe even make hunting for you a little bit better, you know, wherever your favorite hunting spot is. But starting this program off at Taylor Orchards in the strawberry patch, Got me hung, a little hungry, got me thinking about strawberries. It's starting to warm up and, you know, it's, it's a good time to pick strawberries. I tell my strawberry guys all the time, you know, we don't need to have strawberries when it's cold outside because you can't pick strawberries with your hands in your pockets when you're freezing. So, you know, it's about 75 degrees now. Um, strawberries are ripe, so I'm going to take a little break from filming and go pick a few strawberries, take a little bit home. As always, I'm Jeff Cook. This is Backyard Basics, where we're filmed in your backyard.